Almost every time we visit a website or install software, we usually agree to a long and complex set of terms and conditions. Often we don't even read, will you stop that? Often we don't even read what we're agreeing to. Here are the iTunes terms and conditions. All 24 pages of them. But before you click agree, did you read this section? You also agree that you will not use these products for any purposes prohibited by United States law, including without limitation the development, design, manufacture or production of nuclear missiles or chemical or biological weapons. That's right, you agreed not to use Apple's iTunes to produce nuclear, chemical or biological weapons. Which means Kim Jong-un isn't just trying to destroy the world, he's also breaching his iTunes contract. Is there no line he won't cross? <laughs> Apple's terms and conditions are so extensive that if you had your iPhone plugged into your iMac and were using iTunes, all their terms, conditions, privacy policies and user agreements combined would create a book that was this thick. And that book would really suck. And Apple aren't the only culprits. The DVD for Disney's Sleeping Beauty had over 120 pages of terms and conditions. Now I know why she's asleep. <laughs> Hey, wasn't that bad? <laughs> Not to mention website terms of use. Almost all large websites have them. The ABC is coming just shy of 1,500 words. And the Fairfax website's conditions of use are a riveting 3,250 words, all of which you tacitly agree to by using their sites. And then there's Facebook. Add up all their guidelines and community policies and you're looking at more than 27,000 words. Is it any wonder that people have trouble keeping up with their privacy policy changes? Remember all those emails you got about them? No, of course you don't. And Facebook have changed those settings 26 times. All you probably know about them is that every one of those changes gave you just a little bit less privacy. You couldn't read all these conditions even if you wanted to. To just read all the privacy policies you come across in one year would take you 76 days. Decline. GameStation, a British online gaming retailer, took advantage of this on April Fool's Day a couple of years ago when they quietly changed their terms and conditions so that people signed away their immortal soul. 88% of users complied. By the end of the day, they had 7,500 souls. The devil really was in the details. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back downstairs. Although the Souls Clause was clearly a joke, when Google Chrome was first launched in 2008, its license agreement included... You give Google a perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, royalty-free and non-exclusive license to reproduce, adapt, modify, translate, publish, publicly perform, publicly display and distribute any content which you submit, post or display on or through the services. Google removed the clause, but for a while there, anything you did through the browser could have been used by Google any time, for any reason, for all of eternity. It's not quite your immortal soul. But it's pretty close. <laughs> it turned out Google had accidentally copied the clause from a different licensing agreement, which goes to show not even the companies that write these actually read them. So I guess they don't really matter then. So all these terms and conditions, I mean, we don't really read them, so they don't mean anything, do they? Well, that's not quite right. The law's still working out what people have to do under these agreements. But you can't sign away your soul. God damn it! The fact is, you can't sign away your consumer protections and there's a special section in the Australian Consumer Law which voids standard form consumer contracts if they're deemed to be unfair. So what you're saying is I don't have to read it because if it's unfair the Consumer Law will fix it for me. That's not true either. What's fair will ultimately be determined by a court, but there's plenty of terms and conditions that a court may think are fair that you may not like. So it's taking a bit of a risk to leave it up to them. That look right. So what's the alternative? A congressman in California has proposed legislation where all privacy policies would have to be 100 words or less, which would make it way quicker to not read them. And if you don't have your own team of lawyers, you can use programs like EULALIZER to scan your agreements and alert you to any strange terms relating to privacy, data mining, tracking or selling your immortal soul. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. In the meantime, millions of people agree to contracts daily that they haven't read, that they probably wouldn't understand, that have terms in them that haven't been tested in court and that could be invalid anyway. And you simply have to accept them. There's no button for renegotiate. Well, two can play at that game.
Why don't you accept the terms and conditions? You accept it? Oh, that's good, okay. You've got to agree to use Yahoo as your search engine now, okay? <laughs> Do you accept? Uh, you just made an in-app purchase of $120 worth of Smurf berries. Can I have the money now? Sorry? It was an in-app purchase. You just accepted it. Just... Oh, Sorry. you accept the terms and conditions, sir. That means you've got to piggyback me around for the rest of the day. Oh. Hi, can I help you at all? You don't have to help. We're just seeing whether people accept these terms and conditions. I'd like to understand how I can help. You can stand on the accept thing. So how can I help you, mate? You could send out other people who will stand on it. <clears throat> okay. This is an impasse. Fine. You should see the privacy settings you just signed up for. If you step on this, you agree to have embarrassing graffiti behind your desk. Oh, that's already happened. What a shame. 